We are two pals, afflicted with an illness, and who only have each other in a race against time. Oh, please, I got AIDS from him. Oh, you boys are like that, huh? No! Ugh, Kyle. Two Kyle videos in a row. I hate Kale. Glad he ain't my uncle. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk. I'm here to talk to you about South Park. Or more specifically, Kyle and Cartman and their relationship. Because we have a lot to discuss. <laughs> no, I, no, no, I, no, not that way. But I would not be surprised if this sort of thing is canon considering Tweak and Craig. Now before I get into the video, I have a question to ask y'all. Have you ever seen the beloved cartoon Invader Zim? One of the many shows Nickelodeon screwed over like a corner street hooker and did not even have the decency to pay. If you said yes, keep watching. And if you said no, open a separate tab and go on TV Tropes. But shows like these, they work because there's a good guy and a bad guy. You tend to get a lot of mileage out of their conflicts. And the idea of bad and good is basically universal. However, morality is a very loose construct. But if Invader Zim, the show is about a bad guy trying to subjugate all of humanity, and the only person who can oppose him is a child nobody takes seriously. He's invisible when he's sad. The thing is, it's a known fact that said bad guy will never succeed because either people don't care or he's so incompetent, he's living a self-fulfilling prophecy. Still, the good guy isn't doing his mission to help humanity. He's an insecure glory hound that won't stop until one of them is dead. Sorry, sorry, I don't want to turn this into an Invader Zim video. The point is, Kyle and Cartman are basically the adult version of Zim and Dip. Yes, Cartman is a terrible human being and a racist, sexist a-hole, but Kyle can sometimes be no better. Sort of. The only difference is Kyle does not advocate for mass killings or bully people who can't fight back. I'm serious. So let's discuss. Blah blah blah, you probably know who Carmen is by this point, and blah blah blah. I already made a video on Kyle, so this section is gonna be super short. <laughs> Throughout the show, Carmen is known for terrorizing pretty much everybody in South Park, but outside of Wendy and Tolkien, his main target is usually Kyle. This is because because Cartman hates everything about Kyle. His Jewish heritage, his red hair, his big fat mom, his jersey side, the way Kyle breathes, the many months later, his stupid hat, his eyes. Oh wait. While Kyle is normally a decent, if super flawed child, Cartman can often bring out a bad side in him. The hypocritical, preachy, whiny, selfish side. While the two could be a little acidic in the pre-movie season, this dynamic was established as far back as season 4 with the episode Cherokee Hair Tampons. Lately, Kyle is having kidney problems because he's a diabetic. They say it's his kidneys. Kyle always has been a diabetic and lately his kidneys have just been shutting down. Wait, 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 wait. Kyle's diabetic? Does this mean he's like Scott Malkinson? Why hasn't Cartman made fun of that? Or why haven't they brought that up after this episode? Imagine it. Incubus. And I had diabetes. Oh, that's in poor taste, huh? Sure, but that's what makes it fun. That really? doesn't sound fun. It sounds hurtful. That's a really terrible disease. True, sure, that's actually an awful disease. I should not joke about that. I'm not Cartman. Kyle is going to require surgery. Sheila is having a hard time coping with the idea of her son going under, and Sharon suggests holistic medicine. Blah, blah, blah. Chi and Chong are there. Oh, look, everyone. These are our two resident Native Americans, Chief Running Pinto and Carlos Ramirez. Ooh, I'd like to Native Native American. Ooh, isn't this back when they were feuding? Blah, blah, blah. I don't care if it's organic. You cannot pay me enough money to shove hair off my hoo -ha. These here are Cherokee hair tampons. They're like tampons made with all natural hair from the Cherokee people. Ooh. A tampon made from Cherokee hair. Now that sounds natural. There's no applicator, no string. I am not using my fingers. Ouch. Blah, blah, blah. And Stan does not think Kyle is getting better because he is not. Yeah but his aura is lighter. That's good news. Stan goes to the doctor and learns that Kyle requires a kidney transplant or he will die. Die? But Kyle's my best friend in the whole world. 
Unfortunately, because of law of coincidentally contrived comedy, the only eligible kidney donor in South Park is Brian Boitano. <laughs> no, I got your hopes up. It's really Cartman. Ah. Stan tries to get Cartman to donate the kidney, but he does not care. Strangely, he does not care because his greatest enemy will die and he'll finally be rid of him. He just does not want anybody else to have his kidney. Damn it, don't you care that Kyle's gonna die? I do, I do care, look how much. Look, look how much I care. However, Cartman can be reasoned with. I need about 10 million dollars. What the hell would you do with $10 million? Um, open up his own theme park or buy a new toy and not let you play with it. The other boys try to take Cartman's kidney, but as we all know, Cartman has the reflexes of a gazelle on coke and also the foresight to buy a kidney blocker. No way! Kidney blocker 2000! Eventually, Sheila relents to Kyle getting the surgery. Oh, but they don't have the kidney! I'm getting to that. One morning, Carmen wakes up covered in blood. Wait, so he's a werewolf or a New Jerseyan? We do wake up covered in blood. When Carmen was asleep, Stan apparently stole his kidney. Dude, please, Kyle needs it. It's mine! Not yours! Man. When confronted, Stan gives it back, and Cartman goes back to the doctor. Now that it's already out, you don't want to just let your friend Kyle have it? No, because it doesn't belong to Kyle. It belongs to me. It's mine. However, Cartman was smeckledorfed. No kidney was taken. Wh what's going on? Kyle's all better, Cartman, thanks to you. Huh? It was all a trick. Isn't that funny, sweetie? Ah! The doctor was the one who took out the kidney and gave it to Kyle. I said I'm gonna kill you guys! Careful, Carmen, you might pop your stitches. <laughs> hey, be happy that you woke up in a hospital, not a motel, in a bathtub full of ice with a little note. Now, in concept, this is not a true Kyle and Cartman episode, since Kyle spends most of it in a sickened daze. But it is one of the first times. To be fair, the first true Cartman and Kyle episode is The Passion of the Jew. I was gonna say Casa Bonita, but that's more of a Cartman but episode. If anything, Kyle is just a plot device to get him to Casa Bonita. Ooh, did you hear the reopening in a few months? Anyhow, the episode takes place during the height of Mel Gibson's The Passion. If you're unaware, The Passion is a movie that retells the final days of the life of Jesus Christ. However, the movie gains a reputation for what some found to be anti-Semitic themes, as the movie implied the Jews were responsible for killing Jesus. I've never seen the movie out outside of a review from the Nostalgia Critic, so I won't comment. However, the idea that the Jews killed Jesus has always perplexed me. Wasn't Jesus himself a Jew? Like the Last Supper was a Seder? By that logic, aren't you basically hating the dude you refer to as your Lord and Savior and the culture he was raised in? Imagine being a French person and hating the French because they killed their king and queen. Not to imply anything bad, but this is basically what you're saying. Anyhow, the movie has inflated Cartman's anti-Semiticism. Sweet, now I can just play with myself. Ew, Cartman, don't. Stupid me isn't around. Kyle decides to go see the movie for himself and finds that Cartman is right. The movie really says that the Jews killed Jesus. How? How could the Jews do that to Jesus? Pretty brutal, isn't it? Except he ignores the fact that most movies take liberties, the Roman Empire was a thing, and Pontius Pilate, the dude who actually condemned Jesus, was not a Jew himself. Kyle goes to see Cartman. You were right. You were right all along. Say that first part again. You... you were right? Mm, one more time, Kat. You were right. Damn. Carmen is so happy, he prays to Mel Gibson. I praise you for all you have done. Only you, Mel Gibson, have had the wisdom and the courage to show the world the truth. Oh, Cartman, you're gonna be disappointed in a few years. Kyle is overwhelmed with the feelings of guilt, having nightmares. He goes to talk to Father Maxi. I have this friend, see? And this friend belongs to a certain chosen people of Israel. And it so happens that these chosen people killed your lord. Dude, you are not slick. You and your brother are the only Jewish kids in town. I can't sleep at night. 
I mean, my friend can't sleep at night. You know what? I'm super surprised Jesus was not in this episode. He saved the day and probably he could do so again here. Besides, how would he feel about a movie that glorified his death or the way people are reacting to it? Oddly, Father Maxi does not tell Kyle that Jews are bad or that he'll burn in hell. Oh, come on. I'm just saying. This was back when he told Kyle that if he and his brother did not confess their sins and eat crackers, they would burn in a lake of fire. What he does give is historical context for why the Passion happened. The truth is, there's not a whole lot in the Bible about the crucifixion. The Passion was actually done as a performance piece back in the Middle Ages to incite people against the Jews. Which honestly is very important they pointed this out. I think the only way we can learn from history is to understand why it happens and how something gets twisted until present day. Meanwhile, Carbon uses the opportunity to start a Mel Gibson fan club, inspired by another of his heroes. Now, we all know why we're here. And I believe we all know what needs to be done. I think it's best we don't talk out loud about it until we have most of them on the trains heading to the camps. Oh my god, Cartman. I can't believe your mom let you go out like that. Eric, sweetie, there's a bunch of people showing up in our backyard saying something about a meeting. At least she's cool with it. Cartman's fan club is meant to convert people to Christianity and also to reenact an appalling evil plan. I think we should all go out and take at least one other person to see the passion. We each make it our responsibility to convert one more person. Yes, and then we can begin the cleansing, if you know what I mean. And another thing I thought would have improved this episode. Why not have Cartman and Kyle working together? They're pretty separate throughout the episode. Cartman could use Kyle as an example for how exemplary and awesome the movie is. Like this Jewish boy standing before you lived in ignorance of the truth, but the movie educated him and now he's repented and saved or something like that. I don't know. Once again, they did it improbably and that episode was hilarious. Kyle could go along with it until he realizes Cartman means to use the club to promote hate and violence, not to actually help people. Later, Kyle, spurned on by Cartman's words, goes to the temple and tries to get the congregation to apologize for killing Jesus. What? 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 If we as a people choose not to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then we can still apologize for the brutal way in which he was killed. Oh, wait until Easter, Kyle. Oh, but hey, it's Dr. Schwartz. Calm down. We live in a rational community, and everyone knows this is just a movie. But Dr. Schwartz, I have to say, do you not know what show you're in? In my last South Park video, those boys fought, you chopped off more wood than the Wunzler at the climax of the Lorax. Meanwhile, Stan and Kenny, who also saw the film, did not enjoy it, viewing it as a needless snuff film, like anything Adam Sandler puts out. And in their quest to get a refund, they find out Mel Gibson is not a visionary beacon, but... Do your worst! You still won't get your ticket money back. I can take whatever you can dish out. Also, he's like most writers, albeit we're too poor to afford the bondage stuff. All three plot lines converge, and what stops them? Realizing that Mel Gibson is ugh that. That's Mel Gibson. He's not quite as eloquent as I had pictured. Which is why you should never meet your heroes. They decide against violence. You should follow what Jesus taught instead of how he got killed. Focusing on how he got killed is what people did in the Dark Ages. Yeah, lots of people got crucified in those times. We shouldn't rely on violence to inspire faith. Oh yeah, and with crucifixion, you did not die of exposure to the elements or starvation or anything like that. You died from choking on your own saliva. People nowadays have problems with lethal injection, but be lucky that all they do is basically put you to sleep. This religious conflict would continue in Cartman land. I already talked about it a few times before, but Cartman gets a bunch of money from his dead grandma and uses it to buy his own theme park. You've been most uncooperative, Miss Lopez. No, please. I promise I'll never make another album or movie. Well, Jennifer Lopez can't make albums anymore because she was knocked off the billboard by Jennifer Lopez, who likes tacos and burritos. What? I'm Puerto Rican. I can do it. When Kyle finds out, he is shocked. Why? How could you do this? There are people starving in Alabama and, and you give Carmen a million dollars? 
Okay, normally I'm not a big fan of these types of episodes, not just for South Park, but for most cartoons. You can't have Christianity in the show and then be like, oh, there's no God. That makes no sense in their world. At least Rick and Morty showed that Rick was debatably wrong, but had too much of an ego to admit it. Although I guess it kind of works here, since not only is Cartman rich, but Kyle discovers that he himself has a horrible diagnosis. I have a hemorrhoid. It's like an infected blood vessel on your- <gasps> Oh, no. At least it's not a canker sore. And what does this so-called god give me in return? A hemorrhoid. It doesn't make sense. What is your logic? Ow. Well, Kyle, maybe the hemorrhoid is your fault. According to Google, you get them when you sit on the toilet for too long or when you're pregnant. Have you been knocking boots around town? Are you part of a kissing company? The hemorrhoid gets to be so bad that Kyle goes to the hospital and they treat it like a terminal illness. Normally, the body would fight the infection, but he's... he's just given up on life. There's nothing more I can do. At least he has the kidney. Kyle, don't say such things! Why? Why, Mom? Because if I do, something bad will happen to me? Because if I do, your god might not shower me with his blessings of infected hemorrhoids? Honestly, this whole subplot is hilarious. Probably one of my favorites in the show's history. But you can't deny that Kyle is a little whiny here. Like when he and Stan try to break into Cartman land, Kyle has to climb the fence and pops his hemorrhoid. Oh, the poor baby. Come on, dude. Oh, god, I popped it. Oh, it hurts. What the hell are you doing? Oh, crap. Oh, god, get me off of here. But as Stan shows, he easily could have just used the front door. Dude. Or he could have had Stan break in, and then Stan could have just opened the door for Kyle. Now I get it. I hate my enemies too. I hate it when they have a good day. When they simply sigh, I am filled with hatred. But Cartman was not going to use the money to do something stereotypically Cartman. It was selfish of him to buy a theme park and not let anybody come, but it wasn't evil. How dare he use his money on something that brings him joy, especially something that prevents the lines, 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 lines. Wait until he gets to Manhattan. Kyle starts to renounce God. In response, Sheila and Gerald tell him the story of Job and how God took away everything he loved and valued simply to prove to Satan that Job would keep his faith no matter what. Unfortunately, they leave out the part about how Job was rewarded for his stubbornness. But even then, I presume Kyle still would have been doubting. Job was rewarded, but he got more kids because clearly you can just replace your very own flesh and blood. Regardless, the lesson does not sink in. And I was right. Job has all his children killed. And Michael Bay gets to keep making movies. So watch Transformers Prime, Kyle. It's the Transformers movies without Michael Bay. Trust me, they are amazeballs. Oh, how I wish I could keep reviewing that show. Meanwhile, Carbon realizes that you can never truly have your own theme park. Riots will break down. Employees want this little thing called money. And nobody wants to be around something dirty. Reluctantly, Carbon has to let people into his theme park so he can pay for maintenance and upkeep and salary. The grand total to... God damn it. 816 people can come into the park today. <laughs> Still, even if Cartman likely has instant access, he cannot take the lines. Totally understandable. And he sells the theme park back to the original owner. The hemorrhoid is literally killing Kyle because he's given up the will to fight. Little fellas just lost his will to live. Oh, Kyle! Kyle, you've got to fight! Clearly, there isn't a surgery he could try. No joke, they actually have those. Cartman, upon leaving what was once his theme park, sees karma catch up to him, like a dude at an airport at the end of a rom-com. I'm Frank Garrett with the IRS. You haven't kept records of your income or payout, and there is a $500,000 discrepancy. Seize the assets. Oh god, my biggest fear. Well, one of my millions of biggest fears. Seeing Cartman lose everything, with more to come, Kyle regains the will to live. It's not fair, I wanna die! I wanna die! <laughs> you are a 
up there. Um, yeah, I mean, you met him when you thought your friends got their periods and you didn't. Plus, you have met Satan once or twice, and you did have extended contact with Christ himself. Anyway, I think it goes without saying that Cartman can often bring out a hypocritical side of Kyle. Kyle will take great pride in doing away with Cartman, even if he is no better. For example, in Fatbeard, Cartman gets the idea to go to Somalia and be a pirate. Pirating is back, my friends. Swashbuckling adventure on the high seas. The stuff we've all dreamed about. And it's all happening right here. Somalia. And Kyle is actually happy for him. I'm totally serious. That is the best idea you've ever had. You should run away to Mogadishu. You should go there right away. I'll even help pay for your ticket. Not because he's following his dreams regardless of what society might say, but because Cartman is 98% sure to die a painful, excruciating death. Please, please let him go. When he's there, maybe Cartman will find Mormonism. Oh wait, that's in Uganda. But to have a proper pirate crew, Cartman invited a couple of classmates. Once again, Kyle does not care until he learns his brother joined Cartman. And he finds out the hard way. Oh, Kyle, he's gone. Your little brother's run away from home. I'm going to Somalia to be a... to be a pirate? Oh God, what have I done? Oh, so now it's bad to be a pirate. Like, it's one thing if it were only Cartman, but Kyle had no problem letting other kids die too, including Clyde, Kevin, and Butters. Instead of realizing he was wrong, Kyle is only mad now because it concerns him. Kyle heads to Somalia, and like usual, gets up on his high horse. This isn't paradise and you know it. The people here are starving and dying. The whole world has used Somalia as a dumping ground for toxic waste. Even the fish here are radioactive. Oh, but he doesn't convince the others to go back. We're telling them that life in America might be a little boring, but it's better than what's going on there. His sole focus is finding his little brother and going back to Colorado. Just give me my brother and let us get out of here. And yeah, he's right about how bad Somalia is and why it's like that. But once again, only so he could show up to Cartman. Oh my god. Jeez. I guess we kind of got put in our place, like. At least Butters befriended somebody who actually lived in Somalia and learned why he was a pirate. In Somalia, people have no laws. They have no rules and they never grow old. They never grow old because they die before they're 30. Okay, despite my problems with Kyle in this episode, that's one of my favorite moments. This hypocrisy continues in tonsil trouble. Cartman has to get his tonsils taken out and through a freak accident, ends up with a blood transfusion. Only the blood was contaminated with HIV, so Cartman is now positive. And not just positive, but HIV positive. During the tonsil surgery, we had to supply you with donor blood. A mistake was made and you were given blood contaminated with HIV. It was a one in a billion fluke. Which question, don't they screen for HIV? Like I've donated blood before and they ask a trillion million questions for a reason. Sorry, you gave me AIDS and you're sorry? How is he able to talk so soon? And why is it there's like this little chord that plays during a scene transition? No, yes, Cartman is the devil incarnate. Obviously, in this world, he is worse than the devil. He killed his stepmother and father and fed them to his half-brother. He did a bunch of stuff I have yet to get to. And when Cartman does something bad, he typically gets karma for this action. That's what made Cartman Land such a good episode. However, Cartman did not get HIV through his own actions. Argument's sake, he did not rob a homeless guy or switch blood with somebody. He just had trouble with his body and required an operation, which was supposed to be a standard operation. Well, there's no doubt about it. Those tonsils need to come out. And heads up, anybody can get tonsillitis regardless of their state of health. So don't say it's something like because Cartman is overweight, he brought that upon himself. He did not even want the surgery until his mom and the doctor reassured him. Well, oh, then I guess you don't want all the ice cream you get after the surgery either. Ice cream? So yeah, I get why he's a little angry in this episode. Cartman finds to his dismay how nobody cares about HIV anymore because it's a 90s disease. Well, that's just great. 
Of all the times to get AIDS, I get it right when everyone stops giving a crap. You think it helps that HIV is more of a livable affliction nowadays than it was in the 90s? Not that it's a scary, awful, chronic illness and there's still a stigma attached, but medication does help. For some people, it can stop them from spreading it to their partners. Nobody likes having a curse, but if you take the right steps, it's manageable. Plus, unfortunately, it's near impossible to make a vaccine for at the moment because of how fast it reproduces. Kyle makes fun of Cartman at every chance he gets. Excuse me, I have to step out for a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really... Cartman, I, I feel really bad for you, honestly. So Cartman decides to teach Kyle some compassion. He sneaks into Kyle's house in the middle of the night, takes some of his blood out, and gives it to him while he's asleep. I do think it's funny, though, how he gives it to him, like Kool-Aid. <laughs> When Kyle finds out he's infected too, he's livid. Then why did Butters say he helped you sneak into my room last Friday night? Oh, nice Butters, you big tattletale. Tattletale? Do you know how serious this is? Oh, now it's not so funny, is it, Kyle? Maybe you being diabetic and Cherokee hair tampons was karma for what you did to Scott Malkinson. Kyle tries to tattle on Cartman. All right, boys, now what is this fighting all about? He gave me AIDS. Um, no he didn't. He gave you HIV. If you don't take medication, eventually it'll turn into AIDS. Rather than tell the hospital, Kyle decides to break everything Cartman owns. No, Kyle, not Clyde Frog. Leave Clyde Frog alone. No! No! Polly Prissy Pants has to be the one to murder him. Carmen says there's one thing they can do. Go speak to Magic Johnson, who also has HIV, but somehow seems to be in tip-top shape. They take a plane ride to his home in Los Angeles, where they learn that Magic Johnson is not a healthy person because he exercises and eats healthy. It's because he surrounds himself with money. Just a pretty plain old ordinary bedroom. Dude, Mr. Krabs would break out in hives if he saw your house. On the trip, Kyle has had enough of Cartman. Time Knock it off, right now! This isn't funny! This isn't funny, AIDS isn't funny, dying isn't funny, so shut the fuck up! Um, no offense, but you seemed to think it was funny when Cartman got infected. And maybe Cartman is using humor because it's his coping mechanism. I mean, probably not though. I think he's just using it because he has privileges now. But you are not one to talk. Kyle realizes that the cure for HIV is to inject yourself with cash, which good for rich people, but not for most of the world. Scientists have just discovered the cure for AIDS. About $180,000 shot directly into the bloodstream. How would that work if you had insurance? Still, Kyle is not impressed with this monumental achievement. Like, honestly, Kyle should get the Nobel Prize. Craig Baby Athletic Association takes advantage of Kyle's hypocrisy. Kyle watches one of those ASPCA-type commercials, but instead of dogs, we get crack babies. Basically, a baby whose mama did drugs when she was preggers, so they are born addicted. Well, that's sad. Kyle is compelled to go down to the hospital and volunteer to help the babies. Clearly, Either they don't have TiVo, or they haven't heard of this little thing called changing the channel. Only to find Cartman is already there. What are you doing here? I'm volunteering my time, Cav. Young Eric has been here every day for the past two weeks, bless his heart. In truth, Cartman isn't going there to help the needy. He makes viral videos of the babies and posts them on the internet. And all we do is pit the crack babies against each other with a little bottle of crack. A thousand dollars. The thing is huge. Wait, but I thought Canada on Strike said that you could not make money on the internet. Oh god, I hate that episode. Giving in to stereotypes, Kyle shuts up and agrees to work for him. Even if the whole operation is still screwed up, they're treating those babies like dogs. And because of Cartman's system, the babies don't get paid, or at the very least, they don't get treatment. They don't even get exposure. He tries to tell Stan. It's cool because like the commercial said, the crack babies had nothing before. It's, it's great because everyone wins, you know? Eventually, Stan has enough. They're finding a useful place in society. What's unethical about that? You sound like Cartman. 
do. The thing is, we're not the ones that made them crack babies. That's their mom's goddamn fault. Yeah, I'm sure that's what Cartman would say, too. Thank you, Stanny boy. Not even a hot tub full of gravy can change his mind. Probably because that hot tub is crawling with fecal matter. Nothing Kyle isn't used to, considering Mr. Hanky. McDonald's french fries and a hot tub of KFC gravy? I mean, he's right. McDonald's fries go cold really fast. Burger King and Wendy's are much better. To his credit, Kyle's conscience catches up with him, and he tries to continue the program in a way that helps the babies, perhaps giving them some money or using what they earn to open an orphanage. We're a nonprofit company, Cap. So then where did the $800 we made from selling an internet ad to Payless Shoe Source go? Down the drain, because Payless is no more. Another store from my childhood reduced to a website. Stan somehow is not convinced. Probably because Kyle is just doing this to assuage his own guilt. Did you see the blueprints? The babies will have their own putt-putt golf course. Why does it matter how much I'm making, Stan? If the crack babies are getting a place to grow and develop, why does my salary matter? Because of Cartman's greed, EA Sports ends up stealing the CBAA rights right from under them. But you little workers had a chance to make something of yourselves. I'd give you some free video games, but it's against the rules. However, thanks to the magic of Slash, not Santa Claus, they at least get the orphanage. Excuse me, what is this place? Isn't it wonderful? All the crack babies will have a home now. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, I think it's a known fact that Cartman hates everybody and anybody, especially Jews. Remember when Kyle's cousin Kyle showed up and Kyle had to bribe him with $40 not to make any jokes about Kyle? Yeah, I know, that's really confusing. <laughs> and Cartman still cracked. Concentration is the key to succeeding in my class. Maybe we'll have to send him to concentration camp. Ah! I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I think a reason why Cartman hates Kyle is because he's jealous of him. Kyle Kyle has everything Cartman could want. Loving parents who are always there for him. He knows his father. He has a little brother who looks up to him. And overall, a great home and friends. But at the same time, Kyle is Jewish. Don't believe me? Look at the episode Ginger Kids. For a presentation, Cartman does his report on, you guessed it, Ginger Kids. Poor kids with light skin, red hair, and freckles. My dad says each one of my freckles is a kiss from an angel. My favorite joke in the episode. He claims these people are afflicted with a disease called gingivitis. So, in addition to having genetic mutations, they also have poor dental hygiene. You know, once again, I'm surprised they haven't made a Prince Harry episode, because imagine what they could say. But South Park is coming back in February, so I shall hold my tongue. Kyle protests because he has has red hair, and to his knowledge, he is not a monster. Some people have red hair, but not light skin and freckles. These people are called daywalkers. Kyle's like the Salvatore brothers? Harrison tells Kyle that if he wants to refute Cartman, he's welcome to with his own report. Kyle gathers research on ginger kids and finds that ginger kids are merely the result of recessive genetic traits. A lot of people carry the ginger gene and don't know. If your spouse is also a carrier, then your children can turn out like them. Wow, and the sky is blue. However, Cartman's project was able to succeed because as we learn, everybody but Kyle eats gingers or finds them creepy. One night, when you're all sleeping in your room, the gingers are gonna get you. They're gonna get you! Gingers can't eat in the cafeteria, they must eat in the hallway. And one family had the fortune misfortune of bearing not one, not two, but three ginger kids. If you really don't want to have ginger kids, marry an Asian woman. Asians don't carry the recessive gene. I know a guy who's marrying a Japanese woman very soon for just that reason. Wow, Trey Parker has a sad saga and a half when it comes to his love life. Kinda like Fat Beard, Kyle isn't doing this because he cares about gingers, but rather because he just wants to show up to Cartman. However, I'd argue this time it's a little more personal, considering how Cartman categorized him. Dude, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Don't you understand what ignorant prejudice like that can lead to? 
I have to disprove Carmen's hateful rumors. And at least he properly did research and talked to actual gingers instead of just whining. To teach Carmen a lesson, they decide the best thing to do is to have him walk a day in red shoes, all like Dorothy, in a dash of karma. Well, for being honest here, tonsil trouble is karma considering how that episode came after this one. The boys sneak into Cartman's room to turn him ginger. Dude, dude, okay, he's out! <laughs> Kyle, that's good! Dang, dude, be Cartman how you really feel! The next morning, Cartman wakes up ginger, and of course, panics. Ah! I'm ginger! Oh my god, Eric! Help me! Help me! Everybody starts treating him differently, including Leanne. My mom loves me, no matter what I look like, right, Mom? Man? Oh, y yes, of course, sweetie. Which does not surprise me. At school, as expected, he gets bullied. He has to use an umbrella, because clearly sunscreen does not exist. <clears throat> The sun's rays are bad for my skin, so I need to be protected when I'm outside. And even Butters laughs at him. <laughs> In typical Cartman fashion, instead of admitting it was wrong to mistreat gingers, he changes his tune and becomes a ginger supremacist. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that the only way to fight hate is with more hate. We are not the freaks of society, everyone else is! I think it's fair to say this sort of implies that in addition to the jealousy angle, he uses his white supremacy as a way to feel superior to others. I am not gonna live my life as a goddamn minority! But Carmen, we're first in line at the water park! Think of all the great people throughout history who were ginger. People like... Like, a uh... Like... What about Prince Harry, or Christina Hendricks, or Ed Sheeran? Cartman's movement, which is known as the Ginger Separatist Movement, grows into a hate group of epic proportions. We will not be discriminated against any longer, for we are a great race! Yeah! Great power! Great power! They consider Annie red face. She's just using makeup to look ginger, and pretending to be ginger with makeup is the worst thing anybody can do! Yeah, that's yeah. right! Yeah. Yeah. Is Annie still offensive if she's a cartoon and voiced by a girl who is not Ginger? Or is Annie offensive because the dude who created the comic strip and the playwrights are not Ginger themselves? Cartman advocates for killing any non-Gingers, believing they should kidnap them from their beds and their homes and throw them into a pit of lava! In a sequence that would make Sam Raimi, Raimi the dude who directed the Spider-Man movies and Doctor Strange that dude quake with fear. You know, I'm surprised Cartman has not succeeded with any of his other crazy plans, considering this level of dedication. I guess he sort of did with the Mel Gibson fan club, but everybody was super naive to what was really going on, and to my knowledge, none of those people knew they were being anti-Semitic. Maybe it's because this time he's working with genuine outcasts who have nothing to lose. Also, I just want to point out, that kid who got murdered when he was reading the morning announcements, he was ginger. So Cartman probably knew him. Kind of fitting he replaced him. Just as Kyle, Kenny, and Stan are about to change Cartman back to normal, they're chased by the gingers and imprisoned. When they come to, they are in cages, suspended from lava, just as Cartman planned. And Cartman is dressed up like this. What we begin here, we will take worldwide until the blood of every non-ginger child has been spilled! Yeah! You know, I'm surprised that by this point he has not formed his own cult. Seriously, imagine him as the reincarnation of a prophet, not Stan. Cartman decides the first casualty will be the day walker, Kale. However, Kyle has some last words. You what? To keep from being torn limb from limb by his followers, Cartman quickly changes his tune and advocates for peace. No, he was just telling me about something funny that happened at school yesterday. Um, oh, but anyway, oh, oh wow, I can't believe how great it feels to finally love my fellow man, huh? Well, Cartman is a hypocrite, but at least he won't die. <laughs> 
However, I think it might also be fair to say that in some way, shape, or form, Kyle made Cartman. In the Troll Trace episodes, Cartman is misblamed and loses all of his electronics. And since South Park Elementary clearly can't afford Chromebooks, Cartman is as good as dead. During this time, he bonds with Heidi Turner and seems to honestly make a change for the better. They start dating and he supports efforts to finance Troll Trace, at least until Kyle brings up something from his past simply to spite him. Somebody like me could look up your entire internet history, print it out, and give it to Heidi. I would imagine there are some things you've done or said on the internet you wouldn't want Heidi to know about. From this point on, Cartman goes back to his own ways and starts to hate Heidi, eventually culminating in turning her into Erica Cartman. No wonder Cartman is mad when he finds out that Heidi dumped him for Kyle. As far as he thinks, Kyle did all that so that he could steal his girlfriend. In the future specials, Kyle and Cartman are separated for 40 years, or at least heavily distant as a result of the separation Kyle has a sad life. He is a counselor, but he has no family of his own. Or at least, he doesn't seem fulfilled. Maybe he should start working at Amazon? Because he wasn't in contact with Kyle, Cartman, on the other hand, has the best life possible. He became a rabbi, married a Jewish woman named Yentl. Yentl. Her name is Yentl. And had three children. The first special leaves it ambiguous if Cartman truly changed for the better. Kyle seems to think he did not, but Cartman makes a good point. You're just doing all this to get a rise out of me. Kyle, you really think I would spend 40 years of my life just to get a rise out of you? Yes, I do! Honestly, they're both kind of right. However, it's fair to say that the pair rarely, if ever, talked during those 40 years. Carbon probably just moved on to other targets. Besides, it's the future. Those kids look like Cartman, but Cartman could just buy a Lexus, customize them, and program them to act like his family. It doesn't help that because of the shutdown, Cartman begs to stay with Kyle, using his children as bait. We promise we'll be good, Uncle Kyle. Please, Uncle Kyle. Please, Uncle Kyle. And he isn't a good house guest, as he and his wife loudly make the beast with two backs while Cartman moans about his love of Abraham. Kyle tries to tell Yentl what a bad person Cartman used to be, but it does not get through at all. Do you know that your husband once stuck in my room and gave me AIDS? I'm sorry? Um, you left out how much you teased him, and that's what spurned him to sneak into your bedroom, and it was HIV, not AIDS. Plus, you yourself also snuck into his room to turn him ginger, and you also kicked his butt in the process. Once again, no better. <laughs> However, part two shows that Cartman honestly made this change. He did not want to stop Kyle from messing with time to keep the status quo. He was just afraid of losing his family. Family. Wouldn't you be? I can't let him change the past. I can't lose you! Now, they never say why Cartman converted, but honestly, does it matter? Cartman became a better person. And like usual, Kyle had to ruin it. And so far, that's Kyle and Cartman. True, Cartman is an evil scourge, and Kyle often does right by calling him out. But at times, Kyle can be just as bad in his own way. He will take up causes simply to stick them to Cartman. And when Cartman makes any positive change, Kyle is right there to kick him back down. Their dynamic is interesting and hilarious, but it does go without saying they can be two sides of the same coin. I want to hold you every morning and love you every night, Kyle. I promise you nothing but love and happiness. And I'm sorry I did not talk about Cartman finds love. I'll probably discuss it when I finally get to Tolkien. It'll likely be my next South Park video.